Hello, my name is Lena Järvi and I'm an associate professor here at the University of Helsinki. Today we are going to have a short lecture or introduction to the topic of atmospheric stability. Atmospheric stability is a variable which describes the tendency of the atmosphere to suppress or enhance disturbances. It is also relevant for air quality in urban areas because it will tell whether emission taking place close to the ground will remain close to the ground or whether it will be dispersed to higher in the atmosphere. But before going to the atmospheric stability, let's first get familiar with planetary boundary layer. Planetary boundary layer is that layer of atmosphere which is in direct contact with the surface. This means that any exchange process taking place between the atmosphere and the surface will go through this layer. For example, if there is evaporation taking place at the surface, the evaporated water needs to pass through boundary layer before it can reach higher atmosphere. This water vapor will create clouds higher in the atmosphere and the water precipitating from these clouds will be passing boundary layer before it can reach the surface. It also means that any emission taking place at the surface will also be transported through this planetary boundary layer before they can reach higher altitudes. Planetary boundary layer can be said to be that part of the troposphere which reacts to surface forcings, meaning changes at the surface within time frame of one hour. It tells that any change taking place at the surface will also impact the properties of the boundary layer within maximum of one hour. In the boundary layer, airflow is always turbulent. This means that the streamlines of the flow are not parallel to each other, as shown by the top figure, which is describing laminar flow, but rather the flow is turbulent 3D motion consisting of different sized of whirls, or also called eddies. Turbulence is very efficient transporter of energy, momentum and mass between the surface and the atmosphere. Mass includes also air pollutants. The strength of the turbulent transport depends on the strength of the turbulence, which is directly the energy or kinetic energy that turbulence is having. How much there is turbulence directly impacts what the strength and how efficient is the transport between the surface and the boundary layer. This turbulent energy is produced by two main mechanisms. First of all, there is a mechanical turbulence production. This results when you have airflow on top of any surface which is still. This surface would create friction to the flow, which is furthermore causing wind shear, and this wind shear is causing turbulence so three-dimensional flow field of eddies and swirls. Alternatively, flow can encounter surface elements at the ground, for example buildings or trees, and in that case that will also generate turbulence to the atmosphere. A second way of producing turbulence or turbulent kinetic energy is thermal turbulence production. You can imagine of a beautiful sunny day in summertime when sun is very efficiently heating the surface. What happens is that the air parcels close to the surface will start to rise to higher elevations. These parcels will be transported by turbulence and at the same time heat tied to these air parcels is creating more turbulence to the atmosphere. Alternatively, if, if we have an opposite case, where we have greater air temperatures, higher altitudes than lower, closer to the ground, there would be suppress of turbulence because of the heat distribution. Thus, the thermal turbulence production or loss is determined by atmospheric stability. Atmospheric stability is something which states whether the atmosphere or boundary layer is stable, neutral or unstable. And this is determined by the vertical profile of temperature. 
In unstable atmosphere, you have greater air temperatures closer to the ground than at higher elevations, indicating similar phenomena as whereas the sun would be heating the surface and the air parcels would be very efficiently lifted higher and higher in the boundary layer. Alternatively, you can think of a stable boundary layer where the air temperatures are greater at higher elevations than closer to the ground. In this case, the air parcels close to the ground will not be getting higher and higher, but rather tend to stay close to the ground where they are in any case. Thus, whether atmosphere is stable, unstable or neutral tells also how the displaced air parcels react to disturbances. In unstable atmosphere, the air parcels will continue rising, whereas in the stable atmosphere, if there is a displacement of air parcel, that air parcel tends to return to its original position, indicating very stagnant atmosphere. Here you can see an example of measured stable boundary layer from Helsinki, Finland. Here is temperature and atmospheric stability data measured between 17th and 19th of December 2010. Temperature measurements have been carried out at four different heights, 32 meters, 16 meters, 8 meters and 4 meters. You can see how on the 17th and 19th the air temperatures at the different heights are very close to each other, indicating neutral or near neutral boundary layer. On the 18th, on contrary, you can see how there is a clear gradient in the air temperatures in such a way that at 32 meters greater air temperatures are observed than at lower levels. This is example of stable boundary layer. And in this case, any emission taking place at the surface would remain close to the surface where people are breathing and would not be elevated to higher elevations of the boundary layer and atmosphere. Uh, thus, we can say that atmospheric stability is something which describes how atmosphere reacts to disturbances. It impacts how much there is turbulence in the boundary layer and how efficient is the turbulent transport in the planetary boundary layer.